Okay, good. Today we discussed about what we called uh, sort of futuristic cognition and the role of uh, prefrontal cortex in decision making and making mental representations about actions that are going to happen in the future. Just the last few slides that I have today discussing about how the prefrontal cortex is, is, is doing those mental representations. One of the really important factors is that you need to know that the prefrontal cortex would have different hierarchical levels in terms of making those mental representations. Those mental representations could go from simple motor representations towards more and more and more complex abstract representation about the future. And these abstract representations could get to something like episodic. So you can see the future, the events that are happening as something like futuristic episodes that are going that are gonna happen in the future for you. And so whatever you are going from the posterior part of the, the prefrontal cortex towards more anterior part of the process, you get more towards more more uh, abstract and more let's say holistic abstraction from what is gonna happen in the future. And this specific figure is a combination of two different uh, meta-analysis or uh, studies that people have done. One is the, in the blue and the other is in the red. Both of them, they show that uh, when we get to the more, let's say, frontopolar areas, we get to a more, let's say, abstract mental representation about future that are going to be more, even more complex. And here, when we get to this point, we have a good level of, let's say, understanding about how your brain is doing the processing, things like what we call metacognition. So even when we talk about metacognition, metacognition uh, is an understanding that gives you a sense about how your brain is going to work in the next minute, in the next year, in the next following uh, parts of your life, so you can see what, what is going to happen in the future. And even this, this level of understanding would get to what we call uh, understanding about self. And when we talk about self, self is about future. Why self is about future? Because self is about hope, the hope that we have, the plan that we have, the values that we have. And every single piece of these, these items are about future. The hope that we have for the future, the plan that we are going to have to future, the values that we are going to use for evaluating what, what is, what is going to happen in the future. And all these things at the end would make what we call self. And that is the reason I think that what we what develop as self is something that is highly related to, the, to, the, to what we know about uh, the future. And of course, I, I told you that many other things like memories, whatever we have about past, would contribute to this image that we, we make for future. But definitely those futuristic aspects would contribute significantly to whatever we are, we are making from ourselves as self. And obviously, as I told you before, we cannot have self without seeing others. So most of the time, whatever we are understanding about ourselves and making an insight or metacognitive insight about ourselves is by observing others. So when we observe others, then we have an understanding about our own type of cognitive processes. So we usually learn about our own cognitive functions from observing others. And that is where we have social cognition. And I will discuss about social cognition in one single, I mean, a whole, a whole class in the next coming weeks, discussing about how social cognition is being processed. And uh, we can get to even minor details in terms of how these level of abstraction and sophistication could be happening even within the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex in terms of starting from really simple cognitive processes like response selection, match, non-match rule, things that are basically simple, to things that are uh, more, let's say, sophisticated and abstract, like dividing goals to sub-goals, 
making some episodic goal monitoring in terms of, okay, uh, I'm going to get to this goal and I have a futuristic memory from this goal that, that is going to happen and then shifting from seeing what is happening inside me and outside me. And this shift is what I was discussing with you about in terms of you need to have a metacognitive ability to be able to shift from internal to external and, and, and navigate this attentional shift without that level of understanding. And all these things will be happening in the frontal polar area. So you get to the point that is even more, more complex and more advanced and more, let's say, elaborative in terms of the, the human cognition evolution over the time. As the, the last part of the session, let me just give you a, a better sense about is there any chance that we can engage these futuristic cognition uh, with, with interventions? And the, the answer is yes. We can have a specific interventions targeting futuristic cognition. We can help people to improve simulation of futuristic cognition. So trying to simulate a, a mental representation of a specific autobiographical future event, trying to help people to simulate what is going to happen in the future. And then helping them to predict, okay, what would be the likelihood of a specific reaction on that specific autobiological, autobiographical future events that I have simulated in the previous phase. So you can do simulation of what is going to happen in the future. If I go to this party, what would the party look like when I get there? Okay, so that is going, going to be the simulation part. And then next step, you can make prediction. Okay, people are going to offer me to eat these high calorie foods. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm making prediction. What would be the likelihood of these kind of events that are, that are going to be happening? And then make a specific goal that, okay, if somebody is offering me a high calorie food, I'm not going to take that. So I'm, I'm making a specific goal. That I'm, 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 this is the, the, the party look like. They are going to serve pasta and, and these types of foods. And people are going to eat those foods. And there would be lots of drinks and uh, things that are totally out of my, my diet. And I'm predicting that there would be a high likelihood uh, people offering me these sort of kind of uh, high calorie foods and so I make an intention in terms of a goal that I'm not gonna eat those those foods it's not just not not doing those not eating those foods but also thinking about okay what are the uh, other strategies I'm, I'm going to take so I, I need to eat right now or I need to take my food with myself thinking about all the the intentions that you can have on that specific scenario and then moving from from that point to making specific plans and uh, implementing those intentions to a specific plans that people can have and can take for, for the next action. So this is going to be a, a full range of uh, a simulation, prediction, intention, planning about future. And all these things are are going to happen in, in your uh, prefrontal cortex and whatever it is going to be, and, uh, as it is going to be more complex, uh, it is going to be more in the, in the uh, anterior part of the brain. And whatever we are discussing about could be more episodic. What we have discussed before was really an episodic future episodic thinking, but it could, get be, it could be semantic as well. So sometimes when we talk about science, we can have sort of semantic simulation about the future. Okay, we do this, we kind of, that would be the result of this kind of finding, that finding would be, and I make a specific, let's say, goal for, for get, getting to that finding. So it is mainly semantic uh, futuristic cognition. But what we have been discussing is going to be more episodic and this is more important in terms of the decision making and all those things. And we call this process episodic future thinking or what we call EFT. And this EFT te uh, technique is it something that we, we, we use in, in different interventions. For example, in the package that we already have, we call neurocognitive empowerment for addiction treatment. We help people to 
specify a problem and list the, 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 the problem and this is going to be the, the simulation part that we discussed about and then doing prediction and then making a sort of intention and plan and optimizing the intention and plan in, in the evolved process. So we develop a model that we call slide and we use slide and we train drug users to use this futuristic episodic uh, thinking to be able to put themselves in specific scenarios that are going to happen. So even sometimes we just give them draw cues to the, and then we ask them, okay, if you are in this specific scenario, if you are in this specific situation and everything that are happening around you, how you might be able to simulate what, what is happening, predict the res responses that you might have, make a specific intention based on the goal and values that you have and plan and organize whatever you are going to do and, and implement those intentions in the next step. So that is what we, we, we develop as a sort of interventions. And as I told you, there are many social cognition and also childhood development implications to whatever I discussed today. And there are significant pragmatic implications in terms of parenting, uh, even what we call social engineering and, and cognitive engineering of societies in, the, in, in a way that are giving us a sort of, or, or giving people a sort of a futuristic prospection about what is, what is going to happen in the future. And also there are some other spiritual sort of even religious implications in terms of how religiosity is giving people a sort of a futuristic cognition. And if you remove the futuristic part of uh, religious practices, uh, I mean, you would, you would not have any, any religiosity. So whatever we are, we are practicing in, in different sort of religiosity, especially in the Judeo-Christian Islamic axis, or even in, in what we talk about Buddhism, it's just about what is going to happen in the future and how we are, we are going to respond to that. So these, uh, let's say, futurist aspect of uh, these religious or, or spiritual practices could be an integral part of whatever we, we know from these practices. So <laughs> whatever I discussed about today goes back or go back to the simple use of a small stick to find something in a hole by a, a chimpanzee and how they are related to each other from this really seem as a simple function towards more complex human cognition and, and human culture. Thank you very much for, for joining us today. I hope that I did not make you tired today. I, and I hope that you enjoyed from the discussions that we had today. Have a super nice day, night, or whatever you are, you are going to have in the next couple of, couple of hours. Take care.